this episode of the Globe News Report, Goshen College hosts a lecture on the importance of rural America. The Goshen Parks Department is honored for its new playground. And mental health care tips with counselor Rick Eby. All this and more on the Globe News Report. Welcome to the Globe News Report. I'm Zachariah Begley. And I'm Katie Swore. Now we're back again for another edition of the Globe News Report. And we have some interesting stories for you from throughout the month of February. Our first story today takes us to the Goshen Parks Department, who recently won an award for their new inclusive playground. Katie and I talked to Tanya Heidi and Mayor Stutzman about this honor. On February 12th, the Goshen Parks Department was awarded the 2020 Inclusion Program of Excellence Award for opening Carrie's Kids Playground. Tanya Heidi, the superintendent of Goshen Parks, spoke on what that meant for the Parks Department. So, so the award to us means that we are playing our part in making sure that we're doing what we can to uh, be inclusive uh, to everybody uh, with all abilities. Goshen Mayor Jeremy Stutzman said the award means a lot to the Goshen community. You know, obviously I'm really proud of our Parks Department. Um, uh, Tanya Heidi and her team do a phenomenal work for our community. And receiving a statewide award like this is um, just, it's, it's always nice uh, when other organizations and other areas recognize what we're doing here in Goshen. Heidi wanted to make it clear that the park was a community project. It's definitely worth uh, mentioning that this project, the Carrie's Kids Playground um, project, was truly um, a community effort. For Globe News, I'm Zachariah Begley. It's really nice that the city's focused on inclusion for all kids. Yeah, they're doing a lot of great work and they're really deserving of this award. Coming up next, Goshen College hosts a lecture on the importance of rural America on the Globe News Report. Goshen students enjoy an amazing record of success. What's the secret? It starts with hands-on learning experiences. Whether it's a service project in Peru, a sustainability semester at our environmental learning center, or broadcasting for our award-winning radio station, it adds up to life-changing perspectives and real-world skill development that makes a difference to future employers. And it's all available at a campus that makes everyone feel at home. Come hang out with us and see for yourself. Schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu visit. Charles Fleurdy, the founder of the Rural Policy Research Institute, spoke at the Yoder Public Affairs Lecture at Goshen College to discuss the importance of rural communities in regional economics. On February 11th, Chuck Fleurdy, the founder and CEO at the Rural Policy Research Institute, spoke as a part of the Yoder Public Affairs Lecture Series at Goshen College. Globe News spoke to the CEO about what changes were coming to rural America. I feel like the rural understanding of public choices are much better served today than they were uh, when the Senate asked us to do this. There is an immense interest in a world in which climate change, pandemics, and terrorism have to play at more and more rural areas. During his lecture, Fluidy spoke about the quality, life, and development in rural America. He also acknowledged the dependence that those in rural and urban areas have on each other. Our sense is that uh, not only rural America, but also urban America, is not fully aware of the diverse assets that rural America brings to our democratic experience. To learn more about Fluidy's research, a Smithsonian exhibit called Crossroads Change in Rural America is currently displayed at the Elkhart County Historical Museum in Bristol, and it will be on display until mid-March. It's a wonderful tableau of what's happened in rural America over the last hundred years, but the question at the end is, where will we be headed? For Globe News, I'm Katie Spore. Katie, it's really important to have lectures like this, to really know what's going on in our community and just to inform people. Yeah, I think everyone in attendance could have learned something from that. When we return, Rick Eby joins us in the studio. This is the Globe News Report. We're here with Rick Eby, a counselor at Oakland Psychiatric Center, to talk about ways to uh, help yourself a little bit with mental health. Thanks for joining us today, Rick. Thank you for having me. So my first question is, what are some tips and things people can do um, by themselves to kind of maintain a good mental health? Well, I often think of uh, about three things that if people could do one or a combination of these three, uh, chances are they'll uh, likely, no matter what level of stress they're having, uh, 
uh, be able to manage life fairly well. And I'm talking people who are at a situation where they think, I might benefit from having some type of mental health services. Uh, those mm -hmm. three ten things would, uh, some of the obvious things we might think of is go get a therapist, a counselor, somebody like that to uh, do some talk therapy. Uh, it could be an in, uh, individual or a group counseling type of uh, situation. Uh, the second one, sometimes people are in a situation where it's, it might be a medical or a brain uh, problem that can be taken care of with medication. So um, some people have had great success with things like antidepressants or other type of psychopharmacological uh, uh, medications. Uh, a third one we don't maybe think about. I see it a lot, say, um, you see it in schools on a college campus. It's people who are being uh, physically active. So actually things like exercise, uh, getting the heart beating, uh, some, taking part in some type of movement activity like uh, yoga or karate or something like that. Some people have had uh, pretty good benefits with um, just uh, in being physically active um, to the point where, ooh, they might have been feeling some kind of uh, emotional stress like depressed mood or anxiety. Uh, exercise can be a big thing. If uh, things were really serious, you might want to do maybe all three of those, and you could have some pretty good success. Uh, I'd say the prognosis is almost always excellent if you t take advantage of the resources that are out there. So if someone feels like they've done some of these things but it's not really working, what are ways they could maybe seek out a little bit um, more treatment or maybe... Um, yeah, and you're talking in the just in the community yeah, in general. In so, community. yeah, there's always a step up. So, uh, you know, if you're in a situation where, you know, a lot of people, you know, there's a theory out there which I subscribe to. Everybody could benefit from a counselor. Now, it doesn't have to be a paid therapist, counselor, or social worker, or psychiatrist, or anything like that. Just having someone with whom you can talk about all of the stressors going on in your life, that's good. But if after that, uh, it's not working well for you. You can uh, reach out to a place like Oak One or a private therapist um, to uh, get uh, services in place. Meeting with a therapist, uh, you and the therapist uh, would come up with some type of plan uh, to determine, hey, how often would it be beneficial to meet? Um, and sometimes, uh, yeah, meeting uh, once or twice a week if things are very stressful for a client, that would be the best uh, option to, to go. Uh, depending if, you know, if uh, things are, if uh, a person is unable to, say, take care of their uh, basic daily needs, uh, you can, there are even some steps to get even more intensive help. You might get your own uh, caseworker who could, could help you out. There's almost always something, there's always a step up that if the current level of need isn't being met, you could, uh, the resources are out there to get, the, get your needs met. You know, we're talking people who might have serious uh, mood disorders, might have some pretty serious situations that, oh, I can't do it on my own. There's always uh, resources out there that can, uh, I'd say, uh, at least in Indiana, you can get your needs met. Eventually, sometimes it can be a, a longer process. So you talked about resources. Where are some places people can go in this area? I mean, you work at Oakland, that's mm -hmm. obviously an option, or better, there are a couple other places people can go also. Yeah, Oakland is uh, what's called uh, a community mental health center. In Indiana, every county should have kind of one community mental health center for here, St. Joseph County. It, it, it's Oaklawn. Uh, if you head south of here to, to Warsaw or some of the counties there, Noble County or Marshall County, it would be the Bowen Center. Uh, and that's the place, I mean, basically we want to make sure everybody can get help if they need it. So uh, there should be a place for everyone. Uh, and those, in those situations, it could be people with, uh, say, they might have limited uh, financial means. So um, uh, they might not have the insurance that would allow them to get, say, services with some providers. Uh, Oakland would accept uh, things like Medicaid, Medicare, 
uh, and actually the, the, the care you can get if you have those um, insurance plans, those um, health care plans is pretty comprehensive. Um, if you don't, say, have Medicaid or Medicare, you have your own private insurance through work. That's where, uh, especially if uh, you're employed somewhere that has, I could say, a, an, uh, an EAP, an employee assistance plan, where uh, one of the, it's a benefit in which uh, you could have a number of therapists within the community to choose from to help you. Now, there's always a, a, an issue of like how much if uh, say you might get five free sessions or something like that but then it can uh, ramp up once again based on need so and uh, yeah as far as what there is outside of Oakwan there are many many private therapists and uh, agencies uh, it might just be one person in their own office it could be a larger uh, setting that might have several therapists and maybe even uh, psychologists, psychiatrists in the office to provide services. So, um, yeah, if there are plenty of options out there, sometimes the best thing to do is get a referral. Oh, have you seen somebody before who, is, who worked for you? Uh, that's probably uh, often a route I would recommend somebody wanting to see a therapist before. A lot of people have come to me, say, hey, I, I have private insurance. Where would you recommend I go? Let's see. I can come up with five or six names of people that I'd feel confident would uh, probably help meet that person's needs. All right. We'd like to thank you so much once again for joining us in the studio. I mean, this is a really important topic to talk about, so it's always good to mm -hmm. get resources and information and let people know where to go. Residents share their love for the city of Goshen next on the Globe News Report. thinking that I'd just be acting. But over the course of my four years, I've taken part in all the other facets of the theater, and I think that's helped me gain a wider appreciation for theater as a whole. I mean, it takes all those things that I'm interested in, like design aspects of theater, the environmental studies course I took, and it takes my music major, and it just focuses it all into theater. Valentine's Day was earlier this month, and although not everyone has a significant other, there is a city that is close to many people's hearts. In the state of Indiana, the city of Goshen is ranked the second place to live where residents were the happiest, based on income, crime rate, divorce rate, and places to eat. A lot of people are out and about in the city of Goshen today, and I thought, you know, it is the week of love. So let's find out why the residents love Goshen so much. I'm here with local business owner, Jasmine Wall. Uh, Jasmine, you live in Goshen as well. What do you love about the city of Goshen? I moved from a big town, well, big city, Toronto, Canada, and moving to a small city was a big change for me, but I love the small town community. Um, everybody just seems to, you know, get to know each other and help each other. For me, I've only been here for three years, but it's been an amazing experience. I've met so many people, and they've all helped me get where I am as a small business owner. We're on the move, finding our next person. This way. We're found on Main Street, we're talking to Jeff, and did you know that Goshen was ranked number two in the state of Indiana for the happiest residents? Happiest residents, no, I mean, uh, I like that. I wanted to know what you love about the city of Goshen. Oh gosh, that's a tough call. Uh, I just I just enjoy coming to see the downtown I knew as a youngster being restored, something, quote, former glory, if you will. And how long have you been living in the city of Goshen? Uh, oh my. <laughs> well, 86 years. Wow. So you really know, like, all the best things about the city. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there used to be. So take it from Joanne. <laughs> Punk if you love the city of Goshen. <laughs> For Glow News, I'm Katie Smore. 
Katie, I'm glad to have called the city of Goshen home for the past three years, and I think it's really evident that there's a lot of other people that have the same sentiment. Exactly. Joanne Kaufman living here for 86 years. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I c can't believe, but clearly Goshen is a special place. That's all we have. Check us out at our social media pages at 911 The Globe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at 911 The Globe and on our website at globeradio.org. That's all we have for you today. Tune in again next time on The Globe News Report.